Hello everyone, I'm back again. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for um, watching my content and um, liking the videos and commenting away um, and also subscribing to the channel because that really, really does encourage me um, to keep posting and also it um, just is, is a way of, uh, from, for me to find out that it's uh, benefiting you all um, because that is really the purpose of this channel. So today I am going to summarise this very important talk for you. It's titled as The Teacher, the Learner and the Method. So you're bound to get uh, an EMQ in the exam um, on the different um, learning teaching methods. Um, so do listen to this presentation really carefully. So attributes of a good clinical teacher. So enthusiasm for teaching, understanding of the learner's um, specific needs, understanding of the educational targets and mandates from um, national organisations, clinical and surgical competence, possession of knowledge, organisational ability, good time management, ability to use different teaching methods appropriately, um, ability to guarantee patients um, privacy, dignity and safety. So inhibitory factors for teachers are lack of time, lack of interest, lack of knowledge of the curriculum, poor level of uh, familiarity with different methods of teaching, lack of um, familiarity with the learner, lack of continuity with the learner, potential pressures faced by the learners, lack of time, failure to grasp the aims of the curriculum, feeling um, undervalued, facing um, competition, bullying, lack of understanding of assessment um, documentation, concerns over proficiency in communication skills, quality of life issues. Types of teaching methods, and this is the most important box that you need to know, and also um, what each of this means, and I'll be going through it, so just um, stick watching this video, and please give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and also comment away if you found this video useful. So, the different types of teaching methods include brainstorming, the Delphi technique, direct observation of procedures with feedback, lectures, the one-minute perceptor, peer coaching, um, problem-based learning, schema activation, schema refinement, simplified procedural hierarchy, complex procedural hierarchy, and snowballing. So um, this is quite a, a useful pyramid, actually, because it's also quite useful um, for all of us, because um, as doctors, we do um, do lots of teaching uh, on a regular basis. And to, in order to make your teaching um, effective, it's helpful to know the kind of um, different teaching modalities that you can do to deliver the teaching. So if you look at um, lectures, the average retention rate is only 5%. Um, for reading, it's 10%. For audiovisual, it's 28%. For demonstration, it's 30%. For discussion within a group, it's 50%. For practice by doing, it's 75%. And um, teach others um, immediate use, is, is 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 really really good and it's at 90 percent um so you can see that when you um the best way of teaching somebody is by um showing them what to do but then also getting them to have a go at it because that's how um the retention rate is really high so coming on to lectures um as this is one of the ways of delivering teaching so it's we've all been to lectures we know exactly what lectures mean it's an educational talk to an audience um, but the participation by the learners is limited it's difficult for the for the teacher to know if the um if the learner is following it and also what the level of the learner is who learning the you know who's sitting in the in the lecture and as, as we've seen the average retention rate is only five percent so it's not the most um efficient way of delivering teaching but unfortunately that's the way that we all have been taught in, in at, at universities Problem-based learning is um, where the learners um, discuss a problem or a case. It's self-directed learning. So um, some of you in your medical schools may have been um, exposed to problem-based learning. So it's where you're given a task and you do you go you go ahead and do your own research, your um, own finding of the case of the um, of the particular question being asked 
um, you may need to go and find uh, the information um, by attending a clinic or by you know doing a Google search or or, or go, going to PubMed, PubMed and reading about about it. But whatever it is, it's it involves you trying to come up with a um, with a, with 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 the solution to the problem that you have been given. Um, so the teacher facilitates the the the, the trainees um, in in their learning um, and makes sure that everybody takes part and also guides the discussion. Um, that's the role of the teacher in a problem based learning. The one minute perceptor is a five step process. The five steps are commitment, justification, application, positive reinforcement, and correction of mistakes. The purpose is of a structured teaching opportunity. It has to have a good rapport between the teacher and the learner, um, and the learner should feel secure and should um, feel like they should be able to ask questions or tell their opinion about something. So, um, so it's, it's it's a five star process. So, um, the, the if, if as for example, this involves asking a question and then letting the learner come up with an answer, so they have to commit to the answer, justify why they think this particular method is better than the other, and then also how this would be applied in, 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 in a clinical setting, and whether then the, um, if, if, the, if the teacher thinks that's the right thing or not, or not the right thing, then to correct the, the learner in a way, um, you know, so, so, so they're learning from this process. Directly observe procedures with feedback. So observes the learner carrying out a task. So for example, this could be like insertion of indwelling urinary catheter, uh, watching somebody do a speculum, um, watching somebody, do, you know, teach them how to do, a, you know, to, to insert a pessary. So lots and lots and lots of things that we do daily in our um, clinical uh, practice. The teacher must observe and make a judgment. Um, and then um, the learner should be given feedback whether they were adequate or in inadequate um, and then offer an analysis of, um, of, 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 their, of their opinion. So the, the, the teacher observes the learner doing a task. The teacher then gives them feedback um, and also tells them whether they were, for example, competent or not. And then gives them feedback as to if they think that they weren't competent, then, then why and how can they improve? Brainstorming is a spontaneous group discussion to produce ideas and ways of solving a problem. So the teacher um, promotes the, the, the clinical and the critical thinking in trainees. Um, the teacher introduces the idea, um, for example, measurement of cervical length by ultrasound scan. Um, and then the brainstorming involves talking about the pathophysiology of preterm labor, the anatomy of the cervix, the changes in cervix prior to labor and, and, and things around it. So an idea is in, in, introduced by the teacher and then that involves lots of uh, discussion around the topic to in order to understand the topic well. Schema activation is a, a schema is a representation of a plan in the form of a model. The teacher would activate recall of basic facts and concepts prior to enhancing learning. So for example, if you were teaching a group of SD1s, you would uh, you would uh, have the assumption that they understand the pelvic floor anatomy. You would then go on um, teaching them about prolapse, um, and 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 you know it. So it so it involves um, active recall of. So the teacher would ask uh, questions about pelvic anatomy to check um, understanding within the group of SD ones, and then um, go on to explaining, for example, how a prolapse happens. Um, in the in the genital urinary area. Schema refinement is uh, for teaching more advanced learners. So uh, learners apply basic concepts, clarify understanding and solve clinical problems. One example is um, uh, a tutorial where um, anatomy, physiology, endocrinology um, is discussed um, in, in the context of amenorrhea. Um, then it's followed by cases where um, where amenorrhea might be seen, so things like um, post chemotherapy or Turner syndrome, and uh, it then involves um, the learners to apply these basic concepts to solve the clinical problems. Snowballing is if the teacher is unsure of the current level of knowledge within the learners, um, the teacher would initiate the discussion uh, quite basic and unstructured. Um, and just allow thoughts 
to come out of the learners and, and to be shared with the group. Um, this then snowballs, um, that means it increases intensity and importance um, to, then, to then be able to discuss more complexity of around that clinical area. Simplified procedural hierarchy is uh, basically um, a demonstration by the teacher to the learner. Um, so, for example, teaching junior trainees um, how to do a diagnostic laparoscopy. Um, so, where the, 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 the teacher will talk about the different equipment used and show them how to do the procedure. Complex procedural hierarchy is something we do all the time in our clinical practice. So what this involves is, firstly, the consultant works with a trainee. For example, the trainee assists them doing a, a total abdominal hysterectomy. Um, the, over time, after assisting the consultant a few times, um, the trainee is able to observe and learn the different steps of the procedure. The consultant then can check the understanding of this trainee by questioning them about different steps and whether they understand the, the, the basics of the anatomy behind it. Um, the consultant is then able to allow the trainee to do a procedure um, and they assist them actively. Once this rapport and this relationship has been built between the consultant and the trainee, where um, the consultant uh, is doing assessments for this trainee to be able to be signed off as competent uh, to do the procedure, the, 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 the trainee then goes on to do this procedure um, with uh, another trainee assistant with the consultant uh, available immediately if required. So. This is a complex procedural hierarchy. As I said, this is what we do, what we do for our learning all the time in clinical practice. Well, that's it then. So this is what um, this talk is all about, all about teaching methods. And as I said, very, very important for your um, part two EMQ questions to do um, make sure that you understand them very well. I remember when I was learning, it wasn't just so clear. And even if you were to like Google these names and um, different things, it wasn't very obvious to um, to understand it. So I thought I'll, I'll make a little summary video so it helps you uh, and also augments your learning. Um, now if you do um, find this useful then please do give it, my video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also comment um, below if you found it useful. Thanks for, for watching.